because they do have a built-in backup solution, which is kind of cool. Um, so we can basically just click on your start menu. And now mine is a little different because I'm using this in a virtual machine, so I've actually disabled a lot of the visual styles because I, I don't like the way that they affect performance. So I've just gone up to my uh, all programs here, accessories. And tell me if you've seen this, Christy. Um, and scroll down. You're going to have this if you're on any version of Vista. Now, mm -hmm. the feature set is a little different if you're using, like, the home edition. Mm -hmm. um, but we will post information about that in our uh, show notes for Episode 71. I've gone into System Tools, Backup, Status, and Configuration. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very, it is actually pretty intuitive and pretty straightforward as far as setup. Have you seen this one, Christy, before? No, I haven't. Okay. But um, uh, there are, there have been pop-ups, and I've selected well, to back to up sure my back system. Up. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. But then it, it tells me the disk is no good, and I've tried right. a number of different disks. Okay. So. so what we need to do is we actually need to set up a, an automatic file backup mm. here. Um, so I'm just going to click on that. And you can follow these prompts. It is actually pretty intuitive, and, and I do think that... Windows is getting better. It's not, I can't say it's there yet, but I think we're going to see even more intuitive uh, work put behind uh, Windows 7. So now it's just asking me where I want to put my backup. So you'll notice that it doesn't give me, and sorry for my start menu always popping up, Windows is horrible for that when I use my Zoom. Uh, it doesn't give me any options here because I don't have uh, a burner and I don't have a hard drive other than my C drive. You can't back up your C drive to your C drive mm -hmm. because th that's not redundant at all. Right. Um, so you've got an extra copy. The only thing that you're protecting yourself against then is accidental deletion of the file because you've got another copy or mm -hmm. editing a file and needing to get it back. But really, there's no redundancy there because if your hard drive crashes, you lose both copies. Mm -hmm. So Windows intuitively has said, you know what, we're just going to take out that risk. We're just going to say, you know what, you can't back up to your own hard drive. Um, so it's only giving me the option of on a network because that's all I have. So I'm going to browse my network because this is a good way to do it. I can store it on my RAID 5 controller. Uh, I can store it on my NAS storage drive. That's network attached storage. Uh, I can store this on another computer on my network just to have redundancy, just to have those files backed up to another hard drive somewhere else on my network. Mm -hmm. But certainly if you have a home server, uh, you can use uh, like a RAID configuration, which is multiple hard drives backing up with extra redundancy. Now, can I just throw in a, a question here? Yeah, for sure. Uh, what about um, off-site record saving um, and, yeah. and privacy issues? Privacy issues with an off-site data backup service? Mm -hmm. Well, you want to use one that is going to offer you an encrypted solution. But, um, and we've, we've actually, uh, we have talked about that on previous shows, just a little bit getting into security with, with data backups and, and not touching on it too thoroughly. But um, you got to there 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 has to be a promise from the company that's doing your backups for you that that they have security that but if they say it's secure how do you how can you be guaranteed that it's well secure? you can encrypt your files so if those mm -hmm. files are being sent to them as encrypted files then even if they even if somebody walked into their office and took your data backup with them they couldn't open it because they don't know how to decrypt it okay so chances are they're not going to be able to decrypt that if you're using a good solid uh, encryption algorithm so Encryption is really what it's all about when you're looking at off-site, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, just looking at this, this uh, has brought up my network. Took a couple of moments there. I'm just going to click on demo because that's where my uh, current system is. And just enter my password for that computer. And you want to make sure that you set it to remember that password because you don't want to have to enter this uh, every time you do your data backup. So I've just done that and clicked on remember password. And then it gives me access to my shared folders. So you do have to have folders shared on that computer. So be it, uh, you know, this is going to be like just a shared folder on that computer's hard drive. Uh, if you've got a RAID, um, you know, you just share a folder and it's going to show up there. So I've named it shared. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is a shared folder. Like, you can name it whatever you want. Um, so I've just hit OK, and that's going to automatically save it there. Click Next. Enter my password again for that computer. This is, and this has got to be uh, a, a login for that computer that you're connecting to. So that is... Um, like a user account. So you do have to have a password on that if you want to have security between the systems. If the computer doesn't have a password, then that's another story. But So it makes it pretty simple here. It's going to ask you, you know, do you want to, just with a checklist, pictures, music, videos, what do you want to back up? And it's nice that it does, like, email and things like that. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so you just kind of let it go. So check off the ones that you want or uncheck the ones that you don't want. This is nice and easy again. Um, how often do you want to do this? Weekly? Daily? 
What time do you want to do it? And this is where we, we almost got into this with a uh, previous product. I would suggest that you run your backups at a time where it's not going to affect your performance. If I'm never on my computer during the dinner hour, perfect time to run my backup because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sitting down at the table. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect my productivity. So I would set that for, pardon me, let's say 5 p.m. So then um, next step is just save settings and start your backup. Now, I've scheduled this, so it's going to go forward, and it's going to do everything that... Uh, that needs to be done. So that's now going to run my backup, and uh, we can see that that's created a little icon down here, and that's running. So that is the uh, integrated system for Windows Vista, and it is pretty intuitive. For I'm I'm pretty impressed with it as far as uh, as far as integrated into the Windows operating system. It's certainly better than previous offerings from like Windows XP, the stuff that comes with it. Yeah. Now, if you're not wanting to use a uh, a Windows, like a, a Microsoft product for your backup, that's fine and, and totally understandable. So what you can do, again, you can refer back to our previous segment on um, Cobian Backup. Cobian Backup is compatible with um, not just Windows XP, as we previous lo uh, previously looked at in, in uh, an earlier episode in the series, uh, but it also works on Windows Vista as well. Yeah. Difference there is that your Windows Vista system is going to find your user files in the Users folder uh, of your hard drive. I'm just going to bring up Cobian's site here just so that we can uh, so that we can see it. So when you're browsing your hard drive from Cobian or from any backup solution whatsoever, so let's just bring up my C drive. So in Windows XP, your documents are found in, uh, and all your files are basically found under Documents and Settings if you keep things where they go by default. Uh, I'm not sure where it's taking me there. Here we go. Okay, so in my C drive, you can see a users folder, and this is very similar to your documents and settings in your old Windows XP. You see Robbie, and in here you've got your desktop documents, favorites, and things like that. So those are the things that you want to back up if you're using a program like Cobian Backup where you need to manually select the files that you would like to back up. So if I just, uh, I always just find Cobian just uh, by Googling it. That's horrible. How my start menu always pops up. Cobian Backup, right there. Eduke.ume.se. Hmm. So you'll see again version 9 and version 8. Version 8 is open source. Version 9 is not. The biggest reason, I think, to go with version 9 over version 8 is if you use uh, higher characters, like if you use multi like a different language other than English that uses like accents and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, version 9 is going to support backing up those files. Version 8 might have problems copying those files in your backup, so be careful of that. Use version 9 if you are uh, if you have files on your computer that are other than uh, English. Hmm. Cool. Hmm. Does that get you started with uh, backing up your computer? I we can't need wait to, to get started now. Yeah, you need to have something to back up to. Like mm -hmm. I was saying, you, I don't have anything internally that I can back up to, but you can have an external drive. Mm -hmm. You can have an external hard drive. Um, you know, something. I always refer back to this guy. I actually almost bought one. Well, they're great. I mean, mm -hmm. as long as it's bigger than your internal capacity of your right. computer, because, you know, it's got to be able to store that to backup. It. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the perfect solution. Uh, it's something that you can grab and, and take off site so if you need So what size to. would you recommend? Uh, well, it depends on the size of your internal hard drive and how many files you've got. So if you've got a 100 gigabyte hard drive in your computer and you think that you might eventually fill that up and you only get an 80 gig backup drive, well, your your computer is already surpassing the capacity of your backup drive. Right. So you yeah. eventually will not be able to back up your computer because your backup drive is too small. Right. So I would say get get something that's a minimum of two times the size. Mm. I would recommend probably four times. Because yeah, I do a lot of photography and... Yeah, and you don't want to lose that stuff. Right. So, definitely, um, if you can do, if you, if you can afford for four times the capacity, mm. if you've got a 100 gig drive, then that means a 400 gigabyte external drive. That's going to give you the ability not only to run a backup, but also to keep redundant backups. You can use things if you've got uh, one of the higher end uh, Vista operating systems. You can use a shadow copy, uh, which basically means you're going to be able to go back in which is what back we in saw time. Just a minute ago, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to give you the ability to to mm. actually go back over files from the past as well. So that takes up more room on your data backup. Right. So you want to make sure that it's bigger. Well, that's good to know. 